Hello everybody, Grace Seeker here, and I am back after a long time of not being here in YouTube, and the reason for it is I have been busy with life and school and everything it threw at me. So, back to business. Today we are going to install Fedora 24. Oh yeah! I'm going to be doing it in VirtualBox because I don't have a capture card to record this thing in high quality for ya and put it on YouTube. So you got to get the image, get the ISO from Fedora, get fedora.org, you just go to workstation and download now and download the image and make sure after you've downloaded you check the hash file to make sure that the image is, uh, you know, healthy if that's the correct word to say about it and after you've checked the image health you can either do this in Linux or Windows but if you're on Linux it's easier for you because you just go to the terminal and you type SHA256 space the image file name and then it will return a value to you which you compare to the value that is stored on the website so if it matches it means you're good to go just burn it to a USB and you can do that using this software here friend of ours Rufus so you select the image here and then you select your USB drive here okay but make sure to back up everything that is stored because everything is gonna get removed and then start and after it is finished you close it and put it inside your computer and launch startup Make sure you press F12 and select the live USB you want to boot from. And when you see the boot screen here, it wants to check whether the image is healthy or not. You can skip this because we have already done that. Start for Live24. And after that, after you selected it, you wait. And wait. And wait until it comes up like this. Come on, Fedora. You're good, you're better than this. System D should be fast. And here it is. So you can either try Fedora to see how it is in live system, but we don't want to go to through that. We just want to go through installation. So click install Fedora. And it will launch Anaconda for you right here. And just for the sake of you guys, I'm going to go with English and not Swedish so um, yeah that's how good I am hmm now this way this window is the trickiest part of Anaconda a lot of people have complained about it that it is confusing at to a certain degree it is but once you do it once or twice you get used to it and it is not as confusing as it was the first time anymore so we're gonna begin with the keyboard, click on it, and add any other layout other than English or your layout that you so wish. Uh, you do select it from the beginning. So add a layout. For example, Swedish, let's say. Add it. And after it's added, you can configure how to switch between bet between between different layouts. My preference is Shift and Caps Lock so here it is and I select it see and then done okay after that you go to time and date and select your location using the map or just using these boxes here and make sure to have network time checked or on because it is always good to have your time synchronized and correct in the Linux system so done okay and then you go to network and select your host name that is the name of your computer which it will appear with on the local network so mine is fedo dash vb and done now it's partitioning time let's get to it okay this window gives you the disks that are available on your computer to choose that you want to install Fedora on so I only have one this this is VirtualBox so I only have this one little fella here but you might have more 
select the one you are gonna install Fedora on and then check I will configure partitioning don't do this for me I know better so you don't need this this is very specialized skip this part and if you want to encrypt your installation make sure you check this I don't want to so done but when you click done it doesn't mean that your whole partitioning is done it means that your selection of disk is done and it will throw you to the partitioning and it is time for you to partition so click on the plus sign I don't have any partitions available on this disk so I click on the plus sign and I type my mount point not bot boot I wanna have boot as mount point and the desired capacity for boot is 512 megabytes the reason I have boot partition is that I am gonna be using LVM and LVM needs a separate boot partition so file system is ext2 because I don't want to have journaling on my um, uh, boot partition so ext2 update settings and it is updated the next thing you want to have is your swap so mount point swap thank you and the size of the swap is a bit tricky now if you want to hibernate your machine if you ever want to put your if you ever want to suspend your machine to disk that is the definition of hibernate uh, you have to have a swap equal to or slightly larger than your RAM so that the whole RAM volume is stored on that swap partition if you don't want to hibernate you can select whichever size you want but if you have a RAM if the a RAM size of 4 gigs or less it's always good to have a swap matching the size so I have 3 gigs on this machine so I'm gonna put 4 gigs of swap and as you can see here it has already created a volume group for me named Fedora Fedo VB which is ridiculous and it is an LVM swap so I am gonna modify this volume group and I am gonna only have the name Fedo for it so see it updates it automatically it's a good it's, that's what's good about the new Anaconda it's smarter and it's much better than Ubuntu's installer man so next thing we want to have is root partition and the desired capacity for that I want to have 15 gigs since I have 25 below so add mount point file system is going to be x4 no change in that the next thing in partitions is home okay and the size will be the rest of the disk see it automatically selected it now one thing here is that it is always good for you to separate home do it please and save yourself from when you want to upgrade okay that's you if you ever have to remove the root partition your data files are stored in a separate partition and you don't have to go through the whole pain of backing it up first and it is a good security practice since you can apply separate mount options in FS tab for your home partition to not to allow executables to be executed and making your system slightly more secure so after that is done we review the whole thing SDA1 boot file system is x2 and is standard not LVM and the rest of the devices are stored in a volume group but the file system of your home is it, it's good with x4 but you can also put it on XFS since home will usually have large files in it so I'm gonna select XFS update the settings and I am done with partitioning come on and then it will show me a dialog for me to confirm my changes and I apply them and we have gone through everything here okay you can also change your layout here if you so wish after you have configured the keyboard I'm good with the US begin installation so this is where you create your user and configure your root password so I am gonna configure my root password done and I am gonna create my user not Gary gray thank you and seeker shall be the username 
If you want to use sudo, take this. If you don't want to use sudo and you want to use su, don't take this. I want to use sudo. Password. Configure a password. Okay, and you go to advanced here to make additional changes if you so wish. One thing you can do is to change the home directory path for your user. For example, if you want to set, if you have Ubuntu and Fedora on the same home partition, okay, you can separate that by applying Fedora just before your username, so that all, so that the new user is put in here instead of the whole home. You can change the user ID and group ID as well, but you don't need to. And you can add your user to additional groups. But I am not aware of additional groups, additional groups names. So I am gonna skip this and save. Wait, did I add? No, I don't need to. Save and done. After you're done, you wait for the installation to finish. I'm gonna wait for the installation to finish and I will be back as soon as it is finished and people the installation is done so hallelujah so quit it and after you've quit it you can exit the live system by coming here and clicking on the shutdown button and restart make sure you remove the USB device after that if you have it as a priority in your boot otherwise you don't need to remove it so restart then and I am gonna eject it from here and it, the boot loader prompt is shown it means that our installation has gone correctly and completely so you wait for the system to boot wait and wait and wait and wait until X decides to come up or is it Wayland now with GDM or X? I don't know anyway so Wayseeker type your password and go in I am sure the password is wrong shit now it is correct And there it is, a Fedora 24 system with GNOME 3.20 for you. Now to check our mount points and shit, you go to terminal and type cat at CFS tab to see everything that we've done in the installation. And it's all there. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? And then that's the welcome screen for Fedora in which you select your language next it and select your typing method but I've already done that installation it is prompted to you just in case you missed it uh, and then you can apply or I mean uh, enable or disable location and the problem reporting services and I do not want to have any online accounts right now but it is nice to, inc nice to include this in the welcome screen that you can sync your accounts after you have installed your new system and it is your it, it is done GNOME help is opened just in case you need anything and yeah it is done thank you guys for watching and if you liked the video which I am sure you did press the like button subscribe to my channel more videos will be coming up soon I promise and uh, I'll be back to you goodbye